off. We are inflicting some decent casualties here. Oh, there's more troops arriving now. Who's this coming? The 4th Brigade, 550 men from the Mountain Department. Welcome everybody to Grand Tactician, the Civil War 1861 to 1865. We're going to use the AOM mod for this brand new Confederate campaign. If you are a follower of this channel, you will know that we just started a new campaign, maybe just over a week ago now, uh, but we had some malfunctions in that. Uh, there was something wrong with the install or the mod or whatever it was, something clashed with the game, I mean, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Gene from the mod, from the AOM mod, reached out to me and we had a quick chat and he was going to have a look to fix the save file for me, but I ended up not going ahead with that anyway, but it was very kind of him to reach out and he was very helpful, uh, as were a couple of the other guys in the comments on their Discord channel. Uh, but anyway, so I, I thought it would probably be best just to crack on with a brand new start, basically, just a brand new one. I, I reinstalled the game fresh, put the new patch on, like I let it update of the latest patch uh, and then i put the mod on and i tested the game for three or four hours it seemed to run okay i didn't have any issues certainly nothing like the game breaking issue i found in that first episode so uh gene thanks again for reaching out and if you are watching this then the mod is great i'm really enjoying it i'll put a link to the mod in the description of this video as well if i remember i'll also put a link to the first episode to the previous first episode that i did a couple of days ago in the description so anyway we're going to start here, we're going to start with the AOM mod. The AOM mod is Additional Officers mod. This mod does a lot more than this. It, it, like it's, it's evolved into something much bigger than just adding officers, but it, it does add officers as well. Yeah, so we're going to go into this, we're going to start the campaign. Like I say, we're going to do a Confederate campaign. So there's various options here. I'll go into a bit more detail on the different scenarios uh, in the previous video. So if you are interested in that, go and check out the other video. Uh, it's still up on the channel and I'll leave it up. Um, but yeah, so basically you've got a sandbox campaign, which this mod is not uh, intended to be played with. Uh, I'm not sure why it's there, but I guess, I guess it's just so you can do what you want with it. Um, then we've got the July 19th start, July the 21st start, and August 9th start. So there's a few interesting little bits and pieces here. I think we started with July the 19th last time, so maybe we'll go ahead with that. There is a whole read me about house rules and things like that. Again, I go into this in the last video. Uh, I don't really want to go over all that again. If you want to watch that, then go check it out in the previous video. Basically, July 19th is like the summer of 1861 start. We're going to start as a confederacy, like I say. We're going to play this game on very hard and mediocre, I think. Maybe that might be a decent setting. I think that's what we went with last time. Uh, the very hard, again, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be very hard, which is what you want. The aggressiveness at mediocre, you might be thinking, well, why not ram it right up? It's just, it, I feel like it hinders the AI somewhat. Um, when you have the AI too aggressive, he just constantly comes at you, even if he's outnumbered. I mean, I, I don't know what it'll be like in this mod. Like I say, I've never really played this mod. I've only done a few hours using the AOM mod, and uh, that was mostly off camera. Uh, just a quick note that I might stream this on Discord. I might not. On my Discord, I mean, uh, I might not. I'm not sure. I, I might do. I've never done that kind of thing before. I don't really know if anybody watches stuff on there. And there's only a handful of followers who, who I appreciate uh, on on our Discord channel. We do have some good discussions on there. A couple of arguments as well. <laughs> uh, and speaking of arguments, actually, it's not often that I ever, ever delete comments on my channel. Because, I mean, to be honest, I, I'm happy for people just to say whatever they want to say within reason. The only thing that I really delete is spam. We could do quite a lot of spam on here, like uh, click on whatever it is, uh, at Instagram or whatever, whatever. It's, it's all garbage anyway. So that's the only kind of things I delete. Except I deleted this comment. I, I should have screenshotted it, but it was a guy who basically was complaining that I'd wasted his time letting him watch that first episode, the previous one that, that broke at the end. He's like, why bother uploading it? Only for the YouTube money. YouTube money? Are you taking the actual piss? Like, this is a channel with 900 and odd subscribers uh, that gets between two and three hundred views to about three or four thousand views per video i get no youtube money off this i do this for fun this is not this is not a monetized channel it's you can't even monetize a channel without with fewer than a hundred than a thousand subscribers so like i did not upload that video for the youtube bucks like are you crazy that video's got like 400 views how much even if i was getting youtube money how much how much youtube money do you think i would get you nothing idiot anyway so uh i was i deleted his comment and i banned him from the channel actually um i don't like that kind of bullshit um because there is no youtube money here this is a hobby i do it for fun and that's it that's all it is um there's no youtube money no youtube books you're just doing it for the clicks and the youtube money yeah the clicks and the youtube money but if i was doing it for that i'd be very much failing at achieving that goal <sighs> 
Anyway, that's enough of that. I don't normally go on like that. Anyway, but anyway, yeah, I, I don't, like say whatever you like in the comments. But, uh, if you're coming across like a like an absolute bell end like that, then I will delete your comment and I will ban you from the channel. Uh, it's not something I do at all, but you know, there is no YouTube money anyway. <laughs> if you, anybody wants to give me YouTube money, feel free. Um, all I would ask is if you do like the video, then hit like and. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of content and if you want to have a chat and join us on discord but it doesn't cost anything that's all free stuff anyway anyway so here we are then july the 19th 1861 very hard mediocre um you, with the aom mod you can't select policy so th this is what we've got old dominion king cotton and native allies this video is chaptered so if you want to skip any bits just go right ahead if you uh, requested a unit which again is completely free i don't charge people money for that there's no patreon accounts or anything like that like I, I don't know what people think this is it's just like this is literally like i uh, i'll stop going on about it but anyway that really annoyed me actually talking about the youtube money like i don't do this for youtube money i don't get any youtube money i don't want any youtube money i just want to have fun recording and playing games that's that's it anyway so if you want a unit in the game drop it in the comments and i'm happy to put that in uh if you requested a unit previously for that last campaign then i'll put it in this campaign as well but yeah Let's get the going here. So very hard, mediocre. Uh, auto managers off. Feuds are off. I don't like the feuds. It's, it's just, it's. I don't know if it's. It's not cheating. I don't think. I just. I really don't like the feud mechanic at all. I always turn it off for the campaigns. Uh, and here we go for the YouTube money. Then let's get started. Okie dokie, here we are then. It is July the 19th, 1861. I'm going to put in the viewer units. They won't all be going in. I'll be putting some of them in as we uh, get more recruits coming. Um, but we'll have a quick look here. So this is the overview. We've got 107,000 men fielded. The Union's got 121,000. That's kind of the most important part at the moment. Navy tonnage, 32,000 for us. 130,000 for the Union. Military experience, fairly close at 12 and 13. Battles won. We've won 11. They've won 9. So this is like the early little skirmishes of the war. Uh, casualties so far. We lost 2,600 men. They've lost 760. European relations are on 29 for us. So you need to get that up to 100, I think, for um, intervention. And... I I've never ever managed it yet, but if we can, we'll do it. I doubt we can, but let's try. <laughs> Trade warfare, economy, you know, obviously the economy is quite a lot better, but overall we're evenly matched. Morale of armies there on 95, we're on 91, how can I? Um, national support 98 and 84, uh, national morale 92 for the Union and 96 for the Confederacy. So that's that. Military, um, so... As we discussed last time, again, if you want to see a more in-depth go through all of this, I spent a lot of time in the previous first episode going through this. Um, so here we are. The setup's a bit different. So we've got these. These are like these are battalions and regiments under the different brigade commanders. This is the Hampton Legion, for example. Uh, so the Hampton Legion, third battalion or second battalion, whatever it is. Another battalion here and another one. So. It's, it's a little bit different and things will have to change over time. We've got a lot of little artillery batteries kind of organized into these artillery battalions or brigades, whatever you want to call them. And then we've got these traditional independent brigades here. So we've got like Holmes Brigade, Early's Brigade, Cox Brigade, Longstreet's Brigade and so on. You know, like like as you would normally have. Army of the Shenandoah, same kind of setup. We've got like uh, Jackson Stonewall Brigade, Bartos Brigade, Bees Brigade, Elsie's Brigade, so on and so forth. Um, so they're all there. And we've got a whole bunch more armies. But like I say, if you want a more in-depth view, then click on the link in the description after you finish watching this video and check it all out. And we're going to a lot more detail in the other video. What I'll do now, I'll add a few of the units in right after we've had a quick look at this. So like, this is the reason why I can't just add new recruits. Oh, actually, we started with 6,000. I'm sure that was only a, a few hundred last time. But anyway, so we've got 6,000 guys to play around with. Where the heck are they? So we've got, all right, so we've got 2,300 from Kentucky, 2,200 from Maryland. Uh, the support in Maryland is 66. That's good to see because usually that's lower than that, I think. I don't know if that's changed. Uh, I'm not sure. So we've got a few guys to, to stick in here anyway. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put some of these units in. I'll change some of these unit names over and uh, include some new dudes. All right, boys. So I've put the viewer requested units in, or some of them anyway. Some of them are still to go in. Let's get started here. Let's go through the different armies. We've got the Army of the Potomac. Obviously here in Northern Virginia. Under Beauregard, 22,800 men at the moment. It's going to be 32,000 total. We've got the Army of the Shenandoah. That's 14,400 men, or will be. There's 10,700 at the moment. There's still guys arriving. Uh, the Western Army out here in Missouri, the very southern edge of Missouri, like the Arkansas-Missouri border. That is under Benjamin McCullough. 
6,700 men it will have. It's got 5,700 at the moment. The Missouri State Guard. Uh, already got a couple of perks here. So we've got the Bushwhacker perk. Partisan brigades. Obviously reflecting the fact that these guys have been fighting out in Missouri for a while. And the grim nature of the war out there. 6,380 men under Sterling Price with 16 guns. The Western Army. Yeah, we've already done them. Army of the Northwest out here in the western part of Virginia. Only 888 men at the moment under Loring. They're going to be about 5,000 men once those guys arrive. Army of the Peninsula under Magruder. 2,500 at the moment. And will be 8,700 eventually. Next up, we're going across the country. Army of Pensacola on the south coast here under Bragg. We'll be leaving these guys in place mostly as per the... Um, kind of house rules for this mod again already got a perk here engineers and mechanics i guess reflecting the fact that brag an engineer maybe i can't remember anyway whatever it is they've got that army of tennessee under hardy this is a, going to be a pretty big one it's going to be fifteen thousand men 2800 at the moment with a lot of guys to arrive then we've got the indian army with our native american allies out here in the western uh, in, in the trans mississippi sorry in the indian territory uh going to be four thousand men they're three thousand four hundred at the moment and then we've got the army of Kanawa. Kanawa? I don't know. About 6,000 men. They're going to have 8,200. Under John B. Floyd, we'll be getting rid of him at any moment. Army of Eastern Tennessee under Crittenden. Small army there. 3,700 men. Army of Texas down in Texas. Still assembling. Only 430 at the moment. They're going to be 3,500, give or take. Department of South Carolina is next. Again, they've got the engineers and mechanics perk. This is under States Rights Gist. Uh, or gist. I'll say gist, I think. I, I prefer gist. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say it. About five and a half thousand men. Again, we'll be leaving these guys in place here. I may switch some of the commanders out and about because I do like this guy and he, he should be command somewhere else. Army of Central Kentucky under Leonidas Polk right here in the western section of Tennessee. Six and a half thousand men, going to be ten and a half thousand. Next up, we've got the Virginia reserve army again a perk here. Uh, 3,400 men under Gustavus Smith, going to be six thousand. Department of Norfolk under Magruder, uh, Magruder under uh, Hughie. Uh, only 800 men at the moment. Going to be about 5,500. Then we've got the Army of New Orleans here under Lovell. And the Army of Mobile. Mobile? Yeah, I guess. 4,500 men under Withers. That's all these guys. Uh, all our different armies. There's quite a lot more than in the vanilla game. Right, so viewer units. Like I say, some will be coming in once we get more recruits available. The guys I've put in... Or in various different departments, but they won't be staying there. They, I've just put them there at the moment for convenience sake. So, okay, let's get started here. We're going to start... It's, again, this is this is chapter. If you don't want to watch this, then skip right ahead. This is just going to go through the viewer units that are in-game now. They're vaguely the same as last time. I, I've tried to put them in the same place as last time, but, I, I mean, I don't know. So, we've got the first Georgia regulars under Colonel John B. Gordon, as requested by Project Lest We Forget. Uh, weapons, I'll change those out once we get a bit closer. They're still 30 days away. Grumpy Grunpa, if you don't watch his channel, go and check him out. I'll, if I remember, I'll put a link in the description. Go and check him out. He does some good content. And he's the one who kind of put me onto the AOM mod, actually. Uh, so, Grumpy, here you are. Your guy's actually in game here. Colonel Grumpy Grumpa, with your color scheme as requested. Again, I'll change these weapons out as they arrive. Your boys are still 120 days away, so they're going to be a little while. Okay, so who else have we got then? Mr. Mister, your boys are in the Army of Central Kentucky under Polk. Unlucky, but Polk won't be staying there. Uh, where are we at? The Baton Rouge boys under Colonel Richard Taylor. Uh, uniforms as requested, I think. You asked for khaki trousers, but uh, there's not really any khaki in game. I couldn't see anyway. Let me, let me see. Maybe I'm just missing it. It is possible I'm just missing it because I'm not always the most observant. I'm not really seeing anything... Like khaki. I've, I've, given, I've given them field green. I think it's field green. No, it's not field green at all. Uh, I don't know. Maybe olive green. That looks looks army-ish. Uh, we'll go with that. Uh, and let's change the tops. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> Yellow tops and uh, what was it? Olive green. I don't know. Maybe that looks crap. Let me know what you think. If that looks shite, then just let me know and I'll change it. Eh. Uh, Go with that one. All right, so that's Mr. Mister. That's your guys there. If you don't like them, just let me know. Who else have we got? I've got a little bit of paper here. I've got to do it old school. <laughs> These guys are armed with the Hawken-type planes rifle as well. Okay, next up then. Who we got here? 
Army of Tennessee. The Czech Texas Volunteers. This is an actual regiment rather than a brigade. If you want to switch to a brigade, I, I can. Uh, I, well, I, I can't eventually, but I have to recruit them in. There's just not really that many available, if you know what I'm saying. So this is a regiment. It's down as the 7th Texas. I, I don't know why this hasn't updated, but I'm sure it will. Uh, the Czech Texas Volunteers. I've given you John Gregg. You did ask for John Bellhood, but I mean, John Bellhood's... You know, he's John Bellhood and he's already requested elsewhere. <laughs> and uh, he won't be staying where he's requested either. I'll be, I'll be moving him up in command. So I've given you John Gregg, who's he's pretty good. He's a Texas volunteer. I like him. Um, and I think he'll do a good job there. Red and white top. And the blue pants, I believe you asked for. Yes, uh, there we are. And they're armed with Enfield. Oh, you asked for Lawrence Rifles. Let's see if we've got Lawrence Rifles. Yes, we have. There you go. Lawrence Rifles, all yours. Uh, quick, where are weapons, actually? Weapons are a bit different, so I, I think there must have been an update to the mod because some there's some different weapons in here, and the names are slightly different. Springfield Rifle is a different name. Mixed smoothbore muskets. I think they were just called old smoothbore muskets, and then instead of reboards, I think we've got farmer's muskets. I quite like that. I like that. We've also got the Augustine's reboard. Um, Springfield M42 musket. So I think there's been an update to the mod, maybe, since I last uh, loaded it, but either way... It's, it's cool. Uh, you've got your Lawrence rifles there. No problem at all. Next up, who else have we got? Uh, Hood's Texas Brigade. That's what we were just discussing Hood. So let's move straight on over here to, to the Army... Of, well, what will become the Army of Northern Virginia. It's the Army of the Potomac at the moment. The Union Army... Uh, the, the Confederate Army of the Potomac. And we have got Hood's Texas Brigade. They were already in-game. I've, kind of, I've just left them as they are. They look pretty ragged. I mean... Armed with Enfields, under Hood, and they're coming in, but they're going to be a while. Uh, how long are they going to be? 185 days. So a lot of these units are some way away still. So that was for Grimwolf. Next up, Strange Man. Your boys are in the army of New Orleans. Again, I mean, they won't stay there. They're just here for now. Strange Man's Brigade. There we are. Uh, mixed muskets. Did he ask for anything in particular? Let's have a look. You want a black shirts and white pants and there we are black well black top and white pants weapons what did you want hall rifles uh, hall rifles are a no-go i'm afraid yeah we only have 900 hall rifles so i can't do that we do have some weapons available uh springfields farmers maybe these reboards i'm not sure I'll, I'll give them some different weapons as they move up towards combat which yeah it'll be soon i'm not leaving them in the new orleans garrison they'll be moving up uh so that's yours strange man the stump tube who we got here then? Reckoned Rangers. Reckoned and Rangers. Army of the Potomac again. Where are we at here? There we are. The Reckoned and Rangers. We've given them these bitchin' pajamas. Uh, <laughs> and mixed smoothbore muskets for those. I mean, I'm going to change that. Colonel Fatman Arkle in charge of the boys from Reckoned. And let's give these guys some slightly better weapons. Look at them, these farmer muskets. There you go. And finally, almost finally, <laughs> Dick White. Uh, your boys are in the Western Army under McCullough. Let's get them found. There they are. And that is the Yale County Rifles under Richard T. Whitewood. Uh, mixed smoothbore muskets for now. Uh, let's, let's give them something else. Springfield musket. Okay, so there's a few units still to put in. I'll put them in when we get more recruits. So I'll just quickly rattle through them. Uh, Dave Martin, the 3rd Tennessee Infantry. They'll be joining... As soon as we get some recruits available. Uh, Mr. Beast Tigers from North Carolina. Again, they'll be joining us soon. You've requested Mississippi Rifles. I haven't got any. Uh, Springfield Rifle Muskets, possibly. We'll see. We'll see what we have. Um, who else we got here? Guardians of the Cumberland Gap uh, from Virginia or Tennessee under John Singleton Mosby. Yeah. Uh, they'll be coming in again once I've got some more troops available. Probably from Tennessee, I would think. Can't you see YouTube? McLennan County Artillery from Texas. Uh, preferably a Texas volunteer with the rank of captain with good stats. Three-inch ordnance or ten-pounder rifles when, when captured, yeah. Okay, so you want them in the Eastern Theatre. We've got no Texas artillery in the Eastern Theatre at the moment, so it'll have to wait till we get some more recruits available, and I will recruit these guys in. Don't worry about that. Sunflex Raven, Rua Valley Battery from North Carolina. Again, we've got nobody from North Carolina anywhere near any combat, so we'll get them in when that becomes available. Um, Sasha 642, First Virginia Military Academy VMI Cavalry Hussars. Green jackets, white trousers, and a Jeb Stewart. It won't be Jeb Stewart, I'm afraid. It'll be someone else, uh, but I'll put those boys in again when we have some recruits available. Um, the Sioux Mounted Contingent. Actually, I, I put them in, I think. 
let me just double check this. Army of Texas under Sibley. Yeah, the Sioux Native Contingent. There you are. Uh, looking pretty ragged. Um, you requested a low-ranking officer with decent stats. We've got Arthur P. Bagby. He's, he's decent. He's as good as I could find anyway. He looks pretty good. I'm sure he'll give, do these guys proud. They're armed with Lawrence Rifles, and they're with Sibley, who will be seeing some action in the next, I don't know, year or so. <laughs> they will definitely be involved at some point. And I think that's about it. If I, if I missed your unit, then just drop a line in the comments, and we'll go from there. And there's quite a lot of talking, even though I said it was going to be a nice quick setup. I mean, it never is quick when I'm doing these. I'm always waffling on. Uh, okay, so we've got a fleet out here. I'm going to get started here now with the, with the uh, overview and uh, the plans, basically. So the idea is we're going to hold defensive lines in the east and the Trans-Mississippi. And I want to push and I want to be aggressive in the central region. Really aggressive. I mean, I want to capture Kentucky if we can. Um, we want to hold our own in Virginia. That's obviously important. We need to keep them away from our capital city. That is that is imperative. And we're going to have to wait a little while until troops arrive and so on and so forth. So first thing first, uh, 41.5 days to get Militia Act 2. Let's get that going. Projects. We've got a few available, but uh, I'm not going to do any of them yet. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised. I don't really know why we can't pick the British rifles yet. It says we funded 1.9 million and you need 1.9 million, but it's not available to take. I would love to be able to order in some Enfield straight away, but we can't. So, anyway, last time we played, we saw action here. This was our first fight, so I'm going to use the little knowledge that I had from there and check out Zolikoff's guys. So these are all pretty small brigades. Got some guns here as well. 12-pound Napoleons, that's great. Political officer. Oof. Terrible officers for the cavalry, actually. We'll, we'll leave them as they are, though. Lots of political officers here, which really sucks. They're, and they're all crap. Zolikoff is political as well. I mean, Zolikoff is one of those guys who could have gone on to do great things, I think. Possibly, anyway. <laughs> Crittenden, he bungled his way through the early campaigns and ended up losing his position, I'm pretty sure. Um, okay, so the Knoxville Brigade. Let's give these guys some other weapons. These guns are they're, they're mixed smooth bomb muskets, so we'll get rid of those if we can. We've got 900 Hall rifles. Let's give them out. They fire really fast and got reasonable range. Carroll's Brigade from Tennessee. Let's give these boys... Oh, we do have some Mississippi rifles. 1,500, so I'll keep a hold of them for whichever unit wanted them. I can't remember now. Let's give out Springfields to these guys. Same with these. Springfield muskets. This is probably where the fight won't even end up here. <laughs> uh, not like last time. All right, some Hall carbines for those guys. Okay, cool. So... There's not much to be doing. We're going to have a quick look at the finances. I mean, our finances are not great. Um, we are funding the military, uh, diplomacy, not much. Our, our funding is pretty low, actually, all, all across the board, which, you know, it's got to be because we haven't got much money. Let's raise up our agricultural a little bit. Industry, a bit more, just up to medium. The military up a little as well, up to low. Diplomacy, I'm going to drop down. Okay. So, not, not crazy amounts, just a little bit extra. Let's get started and see what happens with this campaign. I do hope it all just works well. <laughs> I would really like it to. Um, Civil War! Further southern states to see it, so we're into the war here. Like supplies is already a problem here. We've got no supply. Supplies, 0%. So, what we may do, I'm going to actually pull these boys back towards Carlton. Uh, and I'm going to pull the Missouri State Guard just slightly out of Missouri. The guys were moving back to Carrollton. We're going to build a depot here. We can't operate in this area without having any supply. I mean, the nearest we have is Fort Smith. And if we push up into Missouri, that's just not going to cut it. Price has arrived. So he's, they've pulled out of Missouri. We're on BBB Plus already. So they're like down to BBB Plus. That's not good. Okay, so uh, the Western Army has arrived now. Or all but arrived. Yeah, they are. Let's build ourselves a depot. 1.7 million. So maybe the price has been adjusted because I thought it was going to be more than that. I mean, not that that's, <laughs> that's substantial. Um, supply is still... Well, actually, Western Army is at 100% supply, but uh, Price's Army is at zero. We've got these guys making a beeline for us. So it looks like we will see action over here, actually, like, same as last time. We've got a lot of time to wait for units to come in here a month for these guys into the Army of Tennessee. So not really much we can do with those guys. We're down to BBB already. Uh, finances are taking a, a header straight away. 
mean, the union's not much better either, but the union is not our problem. So this is going to be a tough fight at the Cumberland Gap. Going to upgrade these weapons slightly more because <laughs> we need all the advantage we can get, to be honest. This is going to be a hard fight. But we need to hold that area. I may actually move Strange Man out. Let's have a look. I, I was going to move him out anyway. Let's give these boys some Springfield muskets. And let's move them out. I don't really... I don't think we need to garrison New Orleans with this amount of troops. And I'm going to move them out. Strange Man, your boys are going to join Zollicoffer for now. It's going to take me a while to get there. Let's see how long. 18 days. It's going to be too late to see action at this first fight, but... They're going to be reinforcing those guys. Uh, either way, we're going to need them. Oh, what's going on? So one of their... Oh, we've already printed bonds. Uh, Mitchell withdrawn, so he's... The Department of the Ohio is pulling back. Strange. That's very odd. I mean, I expected to see combat here, but it didn't happen. Army of the West is on the march, but heading up towards Rolla, which is not what I was expecting. <laughs> 10 days ago, that supply depot was ready. And we can start some sort of offensive manoeuvres. Ships in harbour, we haven't really got very much. There's not a lot we can do with our fleets at the moment. So the Union hasn't come at us in Virginia. It hasn't come at us in the central area. I'm not really sure why that is. I expected to be fighting by now. We are seeing a fleet coming down. First public weather forecast. Interesting. We do see this fleet on the move here. The Missouri River Squadron. Eight ships, 34 guns. Coming towards the Kentucky Squadron under Isaac Brown. Alright, so we've got the supply depot here at Carrollton now. But, condition alert. Low food. I don't know why they haven't picked up any supply. I mean, we're not miles away from a from the depot at Fort Smith. And there's everything we need there. And a lot of what we need, I think a new Carrollton depot. So hopefully... We want to pick up... Oh, there they are. They're back in supply. So they've managed to pick it up from the depot at Fort Smith, I think. Disaster at Memphis Ferry. I mean, they didn't even tell us they were fighting there. Uh, one ship lost. Disappointing. We've got the New Madrid militia in here and the Fort Pillow garrison. I mean, surely this fort can hold against this little tiny fleet. Especially since it's backed up with the Memphis squadron as well. Looks like we're doing okay. Quite an interesting naval battle. A good bombardment going on here. Glorious victory of Memphis Ferris. One ship captured. Nice. We captured the USS Salem. Let's send it back to port for repairs. Um, we've got a few little ships ready here, so let's get out the third rate steamer Sumter and send it off to join the Memphis squadron. Nicely done, boys. Station next to Fort Pillow. The Kentucky Squadron, maybe it wasn't ready for combat or, or whatever it is, but it didn't do very well. <laughs> so we had some fleet action there. These boys are struggling with supply. Are they going to come at us again? Ooh, more troops are arriving. Department of Columbus. It looks like they really fancy having a, a pop at this area. I'm going to send the Nashville squadron up towards Cairo, Illinois, just for a look. How long for Strange Man's boys to join us here? Let's have a look. One day, so your, your guy's almost there. So if there is action here, we'll see Strange Man in combat. Although I suspect it's going to be a tough fight. British rifles, we can do now. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to mostly rely on imported weapons here so uh, our economy is never really realistically going to be able to cope with the rigors of equipping a modern army uh, it's just not going to happen not really You've got to bear in mind that these rifles are very expensive as well so we can't order farmers rifles let's have a look how much they would be 
So 5,000 will cost 2.9 million and take 314 days. That just shows the state of our economy, really, and our uh, our ability to produce weapons, which is not good. 7.2 million for 5,000 Enfield rifles. 10,000 would be 14 million and take 100 days. Um, yeah, let's we'll order 10,000 of those, and that'll be it for weapons for a while. We'll make do with what we've got. Our supplies are coming from Charlotte, North Carolina, so it's quite a long way away for to equip these guys. But it's okay. Strange man has arrived here, so we've got a full brigade. That's awesome. These smaller brigades, you know, not uh, not too great. So we've issued bonds again. Um, we're on August the 9th. We still haven't had a major battle. We haven't had well, any battle, actually, to be honest. I'm surprised that we've had nothing happen in Virginia. Our army of the Northwest is struggling with supply. Um, we're facing the mountain department here, 6,500 men. So, I mean, realistically, the 800 men in that force are not going to be able to do anything about that. Um, Fort Pillow construction complete. I mean, I guess that's because it was damaged in that action. The Nashville squadron has arrived. Okay, so I'm going to pull the army of the Northwest towards uh, Stanton. And maybe we'll build a depot down here. We've got 13 days for a whole bunch of guys to arrive into the army of the Kanawha under Floyd. Floyd is a terrible commander, but he's a political general. Would, eh, all these guys are pretty bad, actually. Maybe we'll do something in Western Virginia. We'll see. Army for Occupation is on the march as well, coming down. Ooh, so that is actually an issue. Yeah, that is actually a real problem. Where are they going to go? The copper mines here are in Union hands. It's because the army occupation is coming across. Okay, yep. Yeah. I'm going to march up with Polk, and we're going to occupy Columbus. I'm going to move the army to Kanawha towards Knoxville. I may regret this. <laughs> Pike's Indian Army. I want to send these north, and I want to do some raiding with those guys. See if we can achieve anything good. We can see a whole lot of ships and fleets here at Cairo, so not much we can do with our little tiny Nashville squadron here. Very slow movement because of the muddy roads. Should speed up once we hit the rail line, of course. And we've taken Columbus here. All right, so the Missouri State Guard is back in some decent condition, and I'm going to push them up north towards Springfield, along with the Western Army. Let's be aggressive. <laughs> it looks like we're going to arrive at Roller just after they've built that fort. Seriously. Or oh, if they stop building it. I'm not sure. Anyway, if they have, that's good. If we can capture the roller depot, that would be amazing. Not entirely sure what's going on here. Oh, and we've got action here. The Mountain Department against Critton's Army of Eastern Tennessee. All right, well, that's unexpected. Was the mountain department not up in... Up here. They must have just buggered off from there and come down and given us a, a scrap. Uh, Floyd has also arrived, so if there is a disaster here, we can always pull back and we know we've got troops at Knoxville. Right, so Crittenden is taking on Reynolds. Fairly even numbers here. We've got 5,200 infantry, 1,400 cavalry and 12 guns. They've got 39 guns. 700 cavalry and 5,400 infantry. So I would say the advantage is probably with the Union, depending on how they're equipped, but let's get going here. This is the first action of the campaign. But before I do that, I'm going to save this. Okay, so the game is saved. I want to make sure that we don't run into any issues like last time, and hopefully, if it does, I can bring it back here and that'll sort it out. So it's been a slow start, but August 27th, let's get started with this battle. All right, here we go then. Joseph J. Reynolds, 7,000 men, 39 guns, taking on Crittenden. All right then, so the fight is around the Kentucky State Road. The Union are joining us from this area up here, next to the stream here. What is this? Powell's River. This is the terrain and weather is not good. Um... But, you know, we won't make excuses. I'll set our guys up. We'll cut back in when that's done.
So a very basic defensive line here. We've got this tiny 31st Tennessee Cavalry, which is going to stay in reserve. Uh, Ruckus Legion. They're going to hit our far right just to keep an eye on this in case the Union come down this way. I mean, I kind of think they might not. But Ruckus Legion is going to watch this flank just in case. We've got Strange Man's Brigade, our biggest force, up on the very far left flank. They're going to try and hold this for us. I think the Union are probably just going to come down the road. I mean, I'd be surprised if they don't because the terrain is so bad. Uh, I mean, they have this hill to cross. But the problem is they might come this way along Gap Creek. So that's something we're going to be aware of. Uh, the objective is here. So, I mean, they could just try and bypass us completely, actually. Maybe I'll leave this 31st Tennessee back at the objective just in case. <laughs> Not that they can do much. But, yeah. Let's get started and see what happens. Getting Ruckus boys to build a little breastwork here, just in case, just in case. We're actually starting at 1800 hours, so I mean, not, nothing much is going to happen today, I wouldn't think. Just bring our cavalry forward a little bit, just to see if we can see anything. We see, yep. Yeah, dust on the road, just going to slow it down. Their cavalry in the lead. First Ohio Regiment. Let's pull this calf back. I mean, it makes perfect sense for them to come this way. If we don't need Rucker on the right flank, he will come and support us here in the centre. Nice, orderly, slow advance from the Union. That's our guns opening up. Get some skirmishers out. See if we can harass that cavalry. Strange man's boys don't fancy this one bit. They're not pulling back out of the fight. We are inflicting some decent casualties here with this more troops arriving now. Who's this coming? The 4th Brigade, 550 men from the Mountain Department. And the Indiana Brigade advancing as well. That strange man skirmish has been sent, sent back. But we have driven away the 1st Ohio. Left 75 men dead or wounded. The boys from the Mountain Department are coming forward here. The 4th Brigade followed by some artillery as well. Let's see if we can't give this artillery a bloody nose. Battles boys armed with the Hall rifles, which are rapid firing. They are firing at that artillery. The cavalry's actually routed, but it's not what we wanted. Now they're firing at the battery. If we can drive these boys back, that would be amazing. Let's get Warhol skirmishers out. Join the fray here. Nasty little scrap at the Cumberland Gap. Strange man at this fight. Ah, Carol skirmishers are away now. We 
We've got Union troops moving off to our left. Strange man's boys, hopefully we can send this 4th Brigade back in in time to turn to meet the other threat. We will withdraw with Strange Man. We'll have too many troops arriving here. Lots of artillery. Oh, Carol's Brigade is actually flashing already. Stay strong, boys. Pulling all skirmishes in. Too much artillery there. Ah, we have sent the 4th Brigade running, though. That's excellent. I'm going to set our one of our artillery batteries to counter battery fire. Strange man in combat again. Still pulling out. Doing alright. Going to get support from the 1st CS Cavalry. Dismount these boys. So we're fighting this third brigade again. Strange man's boys are doing a good job here. It's their first battle. Holding our left flank with support from this cavalry. Union leaving quite a lot of men dead here. Their artillery is definitely an issue. There's quite a lot of it there. I think our, our right flank is secure. Get these boys some skirmishes out and see if we can't hit that artillery. What time is it? 20 hundred hours. I think this is going to go to 2200 maybe. Ah, we sent them running. Excellent. Enemies retreating, they've had enough. And we let them go. Only 10 minutes in anyway. Uh, but the 2nd Brigade is coming forward. They fancy a little scrap with us. Send some skirmishes up against them. Nicely done from Strange Man's Brigade there. Excellent. Uh, always good to see the viewer units getting involved. Not sure why the 2nd Brigade fancy the scrap. I suppose it was just a rear guard action. There we are. Minor victory. We lost 127 men. They lost 350 and 20 guns. Uh, so that's a nice little skirmish to start the day off. Let's hope that this does not break the game like last time. Brigadier General G.B. Crittenden has become famous and is an inspiration to his men. Well, nice for him. Okay, it seems to have worked just fine. There we are, so the units are all there. Uh, the Mountain Department's fleeing in panic. Crittenden becomes a hero. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Sergeant loses face. Yeah, not good. Let's see then. 
The Battle of Cumberland Gap is an ended with the Mountain Department retreating in panic. My command has earned us a total victory with the enemy army running for their lives. The enemy has reportedly suffered total casualties of 374 men, 73 killed, 68 captured. Morale is believed to be stable. We lost 127 men, 10 killed, 18 missing, the rest wounded. We are confident and our supply situation is mediocre. We've captured 160 rifles and 6 guns. 70 prisoners have been captured. Uh, 70 soldiers have been captured. Okay, so that was that was a nice little skirmish to start the day off. Start the day off? Start the uh, campaign off. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, I know it was a bit slow and it was similar to the first episode of the previous series, which didn't really go as planned. But I think we're in a good place here. Let's call it an end to the first episode. And I hope I'll see you in the next one. If you're new here, why not subscribe? Come and say hello on the Discord channel. Uh, if you feel like doing so, that'll be in the description, the link for that. Um, so, hope I'll see you there. Enjoy your day, whatever you're doing. Ta-ra for now.